when people say like reflux is just a missile spamming weapon it's not necessarily a problem that the reflux itself is like really bad and you can't do anything with it i don't think that's necessarily true i think it's a skill issue and i think as a community we need to get better with reflux in order to make it like to to find its strengths i do think it's kind of weak and it needs a buff but the reason why people say it's a like missile spamming weapon is because this is so important and no one else in your games almost always is not going to have this missile and when you find yourself in this kind of matchup it's really important for you to identify that a charger's in your game and all of your game plans need to revolve around missling this person so your team can move how you move after you missile and the timing of your missiles like there's a lot of there's a lot of skill to like using missiles and some people are going to like scoff at that because they're short-sighted and trying to be uh toxic or whatever but there's a lot of decision making of how you use missiles and i think we've gone over a lot of examples of like how we could be a little bit more cor correct and optimize the way that we play with missiles so that we're able to identify the problem and be able to play around that problem I am a big fan of missiles, unironically, so I'm I'm actually excited to hopefully see a little bit of a little bit of missiles flying around the map. 2400? Congrats. Don't say only 2400, that's chilling. You're gonna spam missiles. Which is cool. The important thing, especially as a missile player, is this E-leader, and basically any charger, backliners in general, but especially chargers and even more especially E-leaders. Instead of just There'll be times where you randomly fire off missiles, but there's times where you have to identify where you are at in a push and your timings of when you missile and making sure you missile this person is going to be so crucial. Going for first checkpoint, e is probably going to be sitting here and you want to make sure you missile them away so your team can take this bridge and be able to push. Second checkpoint, at least on this map, you have the option, but against of like taking it either side but you know e-leaders sitting here they can they, they see everything e-leaders crazy so you know when they're sitting back here especially first one it, it's still important and you always want to have good missiles but this one especially you're the one that's handling this and you're the only one that's handling this you maybe rain can kind of sustain but Blob's likely not going to get in a spot where the rain's going to end up like doing that role. And you can also rely on like a not rely, but you can also maybe expect like a, a random hammer throw. Otherwise, you are sustaining like you, you have to contain this E leader. This is your role in the match. I don't care about anything else that happens in this match. This is your your main focus. The other thing, because it's Rainmaker, we have to like be worried about general pop. They're always going to have at least like two bombs and if you don't have like a full setup ready you may your team may potentially get wiped from that so those are the two biggest things here but e-leader is going to be very frustrating and if you don't contain the e-leader your teammates just like solo queue brain they're going to get frustrated and they're just going to keep holding forward and they're going to keep getting sniped and they're going to keep doing stuff by themselves it is your job to contain this person so these people are happy you have to manage their happiness so they stop doing stupid stuff anyways back to match um honestly if i were you we'll, we'll let the opening play out and then i'll talk through it especially the heavy that wants to charge in and the blob that wants to go in, they're really slow with their paint to get to the Rainmaker. So I think you should be giving up Rainmaker completely. It's cool that you got it in this scenario, but against better teams, like you're going to get punished for this. I would much rather you have missiles ready after the pop than the whatever value you get from contesting this pop. Because like by the time they get the pop and everything and you have missiles ready, your heavy will finally be in position over here 
And then they have to deal with an E-leader, and then they can't play the game. Until you have missiles ready, and until something happens to this E-leader, this heavy can't play the game. This blob, they're already crying, but now they're even more sad. Jim, or like Squid School, did a really good video on like the rain, like how much a pop, like what that gets you on each map. This doesn't give you a whole ton. It can potentially get you special, but I'd rather you just consistently, regardless of pop, just paint your base. Like you can kind of move forward as well, but like paint your base as a reflux and just get your missiles ready. Just, like you always have missiles regardless of what's going on here. You don't want to, you having missiles up or not, depend on getting this because you can do it yourself either way. And missiles are global. So like, even if you're a little bit farther behind, you can pop missiles from like back here, like under the bridge and your team can still push with it. Every time you get into a Rainmaker match for a rotation, practice. What's your expectation? You know, looking at the comps before you even jump into the map. You get to see what both comps are, make a decision. Which team is getting popped? Try to be justified, but make that decision. And then it plays out. If you think you're, you're going to get it, commit to it. Go for it. If you get punished, whatever. But try to build up that decision making. When you're, like, when you're in these extended fights, I wouldn't do it with Reflux, but like short range shooters. They're going to, like, if, if these fights get sustained, there's always the option that some short-range weapon's going to flank around before this thing pops and get a pick on the enemy team. The game's happening, and, like, you don't have special. It's like, what are you doing? You know, not, not like you specifically, but, like, what, what can you do? E-leader just gets to sit on this bridge, or they get to sit over here, and they outrange your entire team. And your entire team's crying, which again, this is anarchy, so that may not happen in this exact game. But like, in theory, that's what should be happening. And against better players, that's what will, what will be happening. I feel way worse about you getting pop and not having missiles than you not getting pop and having missiles. Because now your team can't really operate unless you take like a gamble. And now you're having a hard time finding paint and like 35 seconds of the match have gone through and now you have special. But we got missiles, we're chilling. We hit everyone, so part of containing the, the E-leader is not just shooting the missiles, but it's the follow-up. So I want to see the follow-up. You pop the, the missiles. I don't like the immediate pop because like your team is not ready to push. They're, they're like still sitting a little bit back. And like this is like a, this is a minor thing, but the like if you hold missiles a little bit longer it gives them a little bit more time to like react the reason why i'm being nitpicky with the missiles is because of how important it is for this game because if you missile and your team isn't ready to push and you don't get value your team is stuck assuming a, a good e-leader player your team is stuck doing nothing until you get missiles again basically but this idea is great using missiles taking the bridge this is awesome love this uh should you be doing that honestly this is where i don't i don't know the answer i think there's weapons that do a better job of it i think um i think the the blob does a really good job of holding this spot and just throwing bubbles down the straight line it allows for another teammate to push up um heavy is also good because it will outrange anything that's not an e-leader um Feel like reflux, and this is just instinctual based off of nothing because I don't play this weapon. I feel like you might get more value, like uh taking a lower position. But if no one's taking the upper position, I don't blame you for taking it. It's okay. Um, so again, in these spots, I don't think you put enough pressure for you to just like swim for like I don't think you put enough pressure with your reflux main weapon and curling bomb to to justify you swimming forward this is this is one special reflux you end up dying again this is a second free reflux special and then this is a third one like or like and a little bit of extra you have to you have to be selfish with this pain if you're playing reflux and the best time to be selfish with paint in your base is when you're already in your base. So at the beginning of the map, and, and when you're respawning. So yeah, I think jumping to your teammates on snipe is fine, but we come back to the same issue. You jump to your teammates, you have no special. 
you have to find paint so you either you know you have to be aggressive and start moving into spots where leader's gonna start sniping you which is like anywhere like <laughs> anywhere past this line and even so anywhere past this line the leader is gonna snipe you so it's like if you jump to your teammates how are you impacting the game are you gonna go hawkeye and like hit all of your main weapon shots Again, I, I don't know enough about this weapon. I'd probably say generally not. So you have to go back and paint anyway. So you jump to your teammates and then you like paint here and you have to keep walking backwards to paint. Okay. Because like even that paint over here is like risky. Against a good leader, they'll snipe you in those spots. Against good leaders, even if you're sitting right here and you peek just for a second, they will absolutely blast you. Alright, I can respect the YOLO hammer when the leader's looking at something else. Honestly, that's a Giga Chad mood. I love that. Anyways. Cause like you pick up Rainmaker, but like what what is your what is your game plan? You pick up Rainmaker and what like do you see something or you are you just like, oh, I should pick up Rainmaker because we need to pick up Rainmaker? Because, like, you have it, and I, I can potentially see some ideas, but, like, when you pick up Rainmaker in this spot, uh, Jay Bambers, is there, like, is there something specific that you're, uh, is there something that you're looking for? So, yeah, in this spot, so you said you wanted to help push with your team, but... You were saying before, without your special, you were going to swim in and apply pressure with your, um, with your main weapon. But if you think that you can get pressure out of your main weapon, like, I don't deny that you, like, Rainmaker can give you pressure, potentially. Problem with this scenario is that if you think that Rainmaker gives you more pressure than your main weapon, which I would agree because I don't like the main weapon of reflux, but I haven't seen it pushed. So I could be wrong on that. Then you should be painting for missiles instead of picking up Rainmaker. Also, you don't outrange the E leader with Rainmaker, and none of your team pushes up. And now y'all don't have your special to deal with this person. You have like a rain and a, a hammer throw potentially. So. In this kind of spot, with the enemy team getting wiped, I actually think this is a good... All the other times that you spawned in, I think it's probably better for you to just paint for special. In this spot where your team has the momentum, this is a really good time for you to jump. So I, I really like this jump. Because y'all should be able to get checkpoint for basically free. That was a good shot. Oof. Nice shots. You constantly poking at this leader and making them uncomfortable and then eventually getting the splat. All of this is good because they can't look at the Rainmaker. So ideally you can do this with missiles because missiles you can do it from anywhere on the map. But when you're this close, up close to the leader, if your teammates have control of like whatever's going on on this side of the map, you're more than then welcome to just keep poking this person because you keeping this e-leader out of play is more important than anything you'd be doing over here especially since your team if you can't if you're able to cancel out the leader your team basically has a 3v2 as you're pushing through and you're chilling you could even potentially like it's a little bit greedy but you could still keep poking them while moving like across this grate because the other, like, you can assume that everyone else on the other team is focused on the Rainmaker that's happening over here. So this is actually an opportunity for you to, like, you still want to get shots over the ledge. Like, you're doing a good job of it. But I would like to actually see you, like, move across the glass and get behind on this ramp as you're hitting shots over that ledge. Because eventually, once you get to this ramp, you can take a close-up fight with the leader and you have a good chance. Like, I, I have good confidence in you, like, just winning that straight up you can sit right here you can paint this area and you can take direct fire shots on this person like reflux should be able to hit these people 
from this kind of range. I want you to keep this type of position. Like there's no reason for you to drop into low ground to get closer. You should have confidence that you can like hit this type of shot. And if you can't hit it, like just practice it. Fake it till you make it kind of thing. And eventually you'll hit those shots. Cause these people are not looking at you. And I don't want you to get into a position where like they're dropping on you and they're in your range. I'd rather you sit up here. And if they end up pushing you, you know, like if this person goes down, which is very likely, this is still a really solid push. But this person goes down and they start pushing you. I'd rather you be able to safely back up and stay alive. And then the person that died, they can like jump back to you and you can keep this push going because y'all are still in a good spot. And more, most importantly, your special is almost up. So even if this person goes down, you can still get a push ready, especially with this pick. This pick is so massive. You're able to potentially look to get missile play to keep this push going. We'll let this play out. Wait, they're cooking. Wait, the triple. Nice. Alright, I see you popping off. I see you popping off. He pop missiles on two. A rainmaker and a zap. I don't love this play. Managed to guess so you'd understand the why I don't love this play. Because this leader that's up here is not getting pressured. And a good leader honestly would have shot at you when you're when you're out in the open. But they're not getting pressured at all from this. I think this play's fine. But I'd also like you to paint for missiles. But this is fine. Because you have backup from your teammates. And getting paint, like, popping the Rainmaker here gives you control of the bridge. But, again, we go back to the, the thing that I'm stressing here. Even if you have control of bridge, their charger sets up here. So we have a little, little E-leader player sitting up on this tent. You have no answer until you have missiles. There's nothing you can do to stop this person. Even if you have, which, like, you've identified that, that control of this bridge is important, which it, it, it is. But against an E-leader that's watching it, it, you can't do anything. You shouldn't be able to push it. The leader should be able to stuff you. And the only tool that you have are your missiles. We're chilling, we're chilling. Zap just respawned, but they're effectively three down. A better leader is going to be sitting back like they're going to be sitting back either on their ramp or they might be sitting back here. Like they're going to be somewhere on this bridge. Instead of popping Rainmaker in this spot, I want you to run this person down. I want you to find them and I want you to get into that same short range battle that you had when you were taking the fight over here. When people say like Reflux is just a missile spamming weapon, it's not necessarily a problem that the Reflux itself is like really bad and you can't do anything with it i don't think that's necessarily true i think it's a skill issue and i think as a community we need to get better with reflux in order to make it like to, to find its strengths i do think it's kind of weak and it needs a buff but the reason why people say it's a like missile spamming weapon is because this is so important and no one else in your games almost always is not going to have this missile and when you find yourself in this kind of matchup, it's really important for you to identify that a charger's in your game and all of your game plans need to revolve around missling this person so your team can move. How you move after you missile and the timing of your missiles, like there's a lot of there's a lot of skill to like using missiles. And some people are gonna like scoff at that because they're short sighted and trying to be uh toxic or whatever but there's a lot of decision making of how you use missiles and i think we've gone over a lot of examples of like how we could be a little bit more cor correct and optimize the way that we play with missiles so that we're able to identify the problem and be able to play around that problem heavy is such an interesting matchup in this game because they 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 cry they're really sad about the leader, 
But the rest of the team, they're like, let's go. Get me on high ground and I'm I'm unstoppable. But I can't do anything while this thing's on the map. But once this thing's taken care of, I am unstoppable. Oh, when you get the open shots, you're popping off. Nice. Yeah, I think in matches where you don't have to worry specifically about very specific weapons, I feel like you're probably cooking a little bit with the with the reflux. But, you know, when you have to play very specific um, and you have to play a very linear game plan because that's what's needed of you to win, you have to make sure that you're disciplined enough and you can identify those situations and are able to execute. But that's what separates the the good players from like really good, really, really good players. And then obviously top players can do all of it really well, but you can be a, a high level player excelling at like one of those things. Nice. This has been a common theme throughout a lot of this, but understand your role. Understand what is expected of you in order for your team to succeed. And this game is like a super prime example, but you need to deal with the leader. You have missiles. And every play that you come up with when missiles are ready, needs to involve the leader either directly or indirectly usually it'll be directly but you need to have a plan for it and be able to execute i think planning is important it's very general and it, it, it goes back to missiles but every time that you missile i want to see a game plan obviously if you can execute it that's great but even if it doesn't work perfectly, like that, again, that, that first missile that you did at the beginning of the match, like 30 seconds in or whatever, 35 seconds in, um, that was like a, that was, a, I, I could see an idea there and you like followed through with the idea, like trying to push up with, with missiles. But there was times where like, you know, leader was here, rainmaker was here, and there was like a zap over here. And instead of focus, focusing on leader and taking this bridge, you missiled and focused on these two people. Well, leader should be shooting you, like you end up moving over here. Leader should be shooting you in these spots, um, but you need to be focused on, even if the objective is here, like this objective isn't a threat. So you do want to eventually stop it, but it's way easier to stop the threat if you're able to get rid of the E-leader. Paint. Base. And specifically, paint the base when you're coming out of spawn. So if you get splatted, there's certain times, like, two of your teammates are forward. I think the Rainmaker was, like, right here. And, like, y'all got a splat, and you were able to, like, jump to your teammate and get the checkpoint, and that ended up getting you your 31 push. There's certain times where you don't need to paint in your base if, like, there's a good play that's time sensitive for you to jump to and you're able to do that. So like, you know, ju ju make the accurate call, but make sure you're making a decision about that. Otherwise, if anytime you're going to swim in, it can be as you're swimming or it can be like just at the beginning, just, you know, pick a side, whether it be like, you know, cause you can kind of divide like this top area can be like stuff, which you don't even need this much you really only need to like paint this much as you're coming out of base you can paint this as you're swimming forward and then you can keep moving forward and it only adds maybe a couple seconds to you getting in um, but having that special is so important don't trust team Enable team. Uh,
So what I mean by this is don't feel like, like don't think about things in terms of like, oh, are they going to make the right play or the wrong play? This is out of your control. I don't, I don't trust anyone doing anything, so I have to do it all myself. And that makes you a worse player. So when you're trying to think about how you fit into the team, when you try to think about teamwork, when you think about coordination, you don't think about like, you know, can they be trusted? But how can you enable them? Depending on the weapon you play, sometimes you have to think about like, how can they enable you? Like if I was playing carbon, I'd think about like, how can my team enable me? But you're not like, you're, you're a selfless weapon. I feel like, like there's selfish weapons that need a lot of team help. And there's more selfless weapons that can provide a lot for a team. I see reflux as a selfless weapon that is able to provide a ton of paint and the consistent special pressure with missiles. And when you think about, you know, how do I enable my heavy? It's getting rid of, get rid of the E leader. That's how the heavy can like exist and like chill, you know, understanding when it's important to use your special and why you're using it will take you far regardless of what weapon you play. Thanks for the advice. Looking forward to try it out and had a problem. Yeah. I, I hope you can find some success again at any point. If you need clarification, feel free to message me on like discord. It's probably the easiest way to get to me. I would love to like, you know, track your journey and kind of be able to like help you make progress. You know, like if someone's like, you know, B rank and they're trying to get the X rank, I want to kind of give them that, that step by step to try to help them, you know, achieve their goals.